Greetings. Welcome to the love zone. <laughs> this is Reverend Valerie Love. Let's go. Today, we're going to address a question I get asked a lot. And now we got the answer. What to do about and how to banish demons, evil spirits, negative entities. Coming right up. There are three things to know about demons, evil spirits, negative entities, how to banish them, how to keep them completely out of your experience. Number one, there is nothing to fear. Remember, you are made in the image and likeness of God, goddess I am. You are source energy. Everything in your world emanates from the field of your awareness and your consciousness. There is nothing to fear. You are the highest order being in the entire universe. There is nothing to fear. So if you have in your mind, oh, I'm afraid something might get me, something's after me, something's going to attack me, you're coming at this from the inappropriate, I won't say wrong because there's no such thing as right or wrong, you're coming at this from the inappropriate space within yourself. Banish the fear. If you have fear around demons, negative entities, evil spirits, first clear, clear it. And the two things that clear it with love and forgiveness, loving yourself, slathering love on yourself, forgiveness, forgiving all thoughts that you have that are fearful thoughts, love, forgiveness. These banish the fear within you about this topic. That's the first thing you have to do within yourself is come to a place of complete and unconditional love. Remember the law. And the maxim stated in the Holy Bible, as you know, I'm a Christian witch. I love reading the Bible. Many, many, many passages from the Bible. Not only the 66 books we got, the Apocrypha, the lost books of the Bible, Lesser Key of Solomon, Greater Key of Solomon, Book of Enoch, all of these sacred writings that bring us the wisdom of the ages. The same wisdom of the ages that comes to us from many holy books all around the world, all the holy books around the world have the same wisdom in them stated differently for different people. This is what they all point to. Love, 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 compassion, love. Come up this, come at this from a space of love within yourself and remember this maxim and this law. Perfect love casteth out fear. Next, amazing being of love and light, number two, once you've cleared yourself of any fear, clear yourself, there's nothing to fear. Number two, know the nature of demons, evil spirits, negative entities. What are these? Well, first of all, where they come from? First of all, a negative entity is created out of consciousness. The same place everything comes from, the same place you came from, the same place I came from, the same place Christ came from, everything comes from one place. You must also banish in your consciousness any belief in duality, that there's a source of evil, also known as the devil, Satan, and there's a source of good known as God, and these two are pitted against each other, God and evil, evil and God. It doesn't work that way. There is one power in the universe. We are all using the same power. This one power is source energy. You could call it God. You could call it energy. You could call it pure life energy, pure love energy, infinite intelligence. There's one energy in this whole universe. Undifferentiated, no agenda, pure, neutral, raw energy. Now, there are two things about how this energy is in its pure, undifferentiated state. That there is a flavor, I guess you could say, to the energy, and it is love, right? So when, if, if you didn't do anything to the energy at all, if you didn't sift it through the uh, portal of your awareness, like you blow bubbles through a thing that's shaped a certain way, the bubbles come out shaped like the thing that you're pouring the stuff through. And the stuff that you're pouring through 
is just bubble water, soap water, and it will work with any shape that you blow it through. That's what's happening. The energy is that soapy water. Your consciousness is the prism, the shape, or the shapes. It's more complex than that. I'm giving it to you in the most simplified manner I can because simplicity and truth really are like this. Truth is very simple. So the energy is pouring through your consciousness and whatever shape or misshapen, however shaping or misshapen your consciousness is, is the, what the bubbles come out like as your life experience. So where do demons come from? The same place angels come from, consciousness energy that's why there's nothing to be afraid of because they came from the same place you came from <laughs> people think they came from some nether region off in the depths of hell and the bowels and the abyss and all of that maybe that's where they live that is not where they came from they came from source now how did these negative entities and demonic spirits and evil spirits and demons come into form this is something we must really grasp. And this, this is going to be mind-blowing. You make a demon every time you have a negative thought, boo-boo. You make an angel every time you have good, joyful, blissful thoughts. They're coming from consciousness. Do you know how many demons we have created in our lives? These are thought forms that have now their spirits also spoken of. Every religious path, spiritual path talks about them. Islamic calls them the jinn. In, in a, the Judaic Christian paradigm, they're called demons. Anything with an O-N at the end of it in the Judeo-Christian paradigm is considered mal or on the bad side. Abaddon, Apollyon, Demon, and everything with an L at the end. L is God, another name for light, another name for God. Everything with an L at the end is light, Angel, Raphael, Uriel, Zapkiel, Zadkiel, Chamuel, Haniel, you know, Gabriel, all the higher being angels and archangels that we, we work with. They all end in L, and supposedly all the bad ones end in on, O-N. So we have the L's versus the ons, right? <laughs> well, once again, that's duality. So if we understand the source of all creation is consciousness, energy, pure energy. It gets shaped into these different forms based on, once again, the prism it's coming through. So, so something called these things into manifestation. It's just like in the spirits, in the, in the um, Holy Bible and in a lot of Christian churches, you hear people say nothing but a spirit. When I was in Africa, I was traveling on a missions trip and there was a large group of us, about 19 of us. And one thing that I heard over and over and over again, actually more than I heard them talk about God, the Christians I was hanging with. They were talking about spirits. That ain't nothing but a spirit. That ain't nothing but that's demonic. That's that's the, that nothing but the devil. So there's something to that. Now, everything is not the devil, and everything ain't a spirit, and everything ain't a demon. Yet there is something to that because these are spirits, a spirit of jealousy. Is a spirit of jealousy any different than a demon or a negative entity or an evil spirit? No. They're all in the same kind of swirl of energy as a spirit of jealousy because a spirit of jealousy will kill. Hmm. A spirit of, of, of rage will kill. A, a spirit, deceitful spirits, all of these. And of course, as there are different, let's call it levels of goodness in the universe, if you could call it that, it doesn't exactly work that way. It's a way that the human, that we can wrap our minds around it, okay? So there's levels of good, you know, there's the good people or good uh, spirits, and then there's the really good ones, and then there are the even gooder ones, and then the ones right next to God, oh, really good. Same thing kind of on the evil spirit side, you know. There are some that are just mischievous, then step it up to, you know, like make you trip and fall and stuff like that. 
Then there are some that are nefarious. That means they're going to try to get you somehow or do something. Once again, there's nothing to fear. You're simply understanding the nature of all this stuff, how energy works in the universe. That's all. And then there are some that are just plain out malign that just want to kill you. That's it. They just have kill on their mind. Now, what about all these energies? To me, these destructive energies are simply unbalanced energy. That means all these energies in the universe, we could group them into two categories if you were going to put them into categories. It's all energy. When it starts coming into, when it densifies and starts coming into specific entities, because remember, the source is non-specific. When it begins to differentiate itself and come into some kind of entity, we could say that that entity is either constructive or destructive. The constructive energies love. These are the angels. They are constructive to life. They build up. They help you. They advance you. They support you, love you, bring you joy, peace, bliss, from the inside. The destructive energies, these are the ones that destroy, kill, maim. Now, here's the trick. You need both. Why? Because constructive energy builds things. This is what you create from. I want a new house and you manifest. However, if you didn't have, pardon me, my house is running. I got to edit that out. If you didn't have the constructive, the destructive energy to deconstruct things, the Kali energy, the destroyer energy, the Abaddon energy, we, we, we hear him in Revelation spoken of as the destroyer, right? If you didn't have the Abaddon, Apollyon, destroyer energy, everything we ever made would still be existing. That would be a problem. That would be a big cluttered mess. Nature creates as she destroys. She creates and then she destroys. It's a cycle of creation, construction, deconstruction. So you need the deconstructive, we call it destructive energies. Destruct. That means if you have a construct, you don't want it anymore. You destruct it. If you have not created it yet and you want it to come up, you build up the structure in your mind. It's a construct. It's helping that thing, that manifestation stay in the third dimensional experience. I pray this is really simple. So this is the nature of it. And that's the second thing to know before we go to, okay, how do you actually banish them and keep them out of your experience? Yes. Number three how to actually banish demons, negative entities, evil spirits from your world and your life experience forever. Here is the biggest, biggest, biggest help clue that comes with this. Remember, you attract what you are. Even if you feel like someone sent a demon your way, sent an evil spirit your way, dispatch something negative in your direction. It cannot touch you if you have the high vibration of love because all of these entities deal on low vibration. Low vibration, they're very dense. The easiest way to keep them out of your experience is to keep yourself high. High vibration, vibration. See, when you're oscillating, you're spinning, you're vibrating faster, 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 faster. You're vibrating more with the angels, ascended masters, higher order beings, fifth dimension and beyond. When you're dense in the third dimension with, you know, despair and anxiety and a lot of fear and all that stuff that people get themselves in wrapped up into, it's low vibration, it's low, it's dense, and it's a breeding ground. Demons, negative entities, spirits. Now, some of these spirits, I also want you to read a book. This is a book I'll recommend for you. This book is called The Necronomicon. The Necronomicon has how to conjure and call evil spirits, demons, out of the places where angels have them locked up. But there's a lot of 
demons that are locked up in, in, in by the angels. And there are a lot of higher order beings that are in that they are charged with. I don't want to get too spooky on you, but that are charged with keeping the evil entities at bay to some degree on Earth planet on planet earth. Okay. So you're not just doing this by yourself. You do have a lot of help from higher order beings. Now in the Necronomicon, they tell you, they give you the exact way to summon demons, but more important than that, it gives you the exact way to banish. And here is the number one way to banish a demon. It's so simple. I'll give you the number two way too. Cause I love the second one as well. The first number one way to banish a demon, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art, this is how I say it, our Father, who art everywhere, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the reason that this works so profoundly to cast away from you anything negative is because this is one of the highest vibrating prayers in the universe, along with the Hail Mary, Mother of Grace, along with the 23rd Psalm, because so many people have used them over the ages, so many saints. It's like a, an own mantra it's like the buddhist mantras it's like the hindu mantras so many people including sages saints yogis gurus have used these that they have power you don't even have to believe all the way in it for it to work you do not even have to believe all the way in the hail mary you don't have to believe all the way in the our father or the 23rd psalm for it to work because these are spiritual tools that are going to work. <laughs> you can have that much an iota. Well, Reverend Val said it. Let me do it. You could have an iota of faith in it. It will work. Because it's so amped up. It's so charged. So in the Necronomicon, you literally read in this book that tells you how to conjure demons out of their spaces and places and, and locked up silos where they live. A lot of them locked there by angelic beings benevolent forces, beneficent forces, powers, to how to conjure them out of there in the specific words to command and to summon them, which right there tells you that there is nothing to fear that you have the power. Because if you have the power to summon a being, then it has to do your bidding because it came when you called it. <laughs> so that right there tells you that you are the one in command of this. So that's the number one thing, the Lord's Prayer. And the ne Necronomicon makes it very clear. And I was already using it before the Necronomicon because I know the power of the Lord's Prayer. And everywhere you go, they say it. We were at my aunt's home going and we were standing in the middle of the cemetery with all the souls around. And we are, and, the, and the, what does the pastor say? Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven. Everyone standing there said it. I don't know if everybody believed it. We don't all need to. There's some who really believe it. And since this is all energy, you're going to, it's like hooking your, your caboose to a freight train that's already heaven bound. You don't have to expend that much energy in the form of belief. Now, our father, the Necronomicon says, the reason, one of the reasons why it works so powerfully, and I was already using it even before I read the Necronomicon, very fascinating magical book, the Necronomicon. Before I read the Necronomicon, this is what I discovered. That if you say the Our Father, 
in the original Aramaic. Oh my God. It's very powerful. I have not committed it yet to memory. I remember the first part of it, Abund Washme and Mithkadesh Shema. Abund. Abund means father. Abund means the, 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 this beautiful relationship, almost like Abba. It's more than just the person who fathered me. It's this very deep, intimate connection with Abund. When you say Abund Washme, when you say a wound, it means you in there. You in there with God. Spirit, source. If you're in there with source and source is love, what's going to touch you? You dwell in the secret place of the Most High, beloved. Safe under the pinions of the Almighty. Where nothing can come nigh thyself or thy camp or thy children or anything that is associated with without anything that is thine yeah get that so the lord's prayer that's number one and and on youtube you will find many youtube vids i follow along i used to say it with the youtube vid and it even has the words and the syllables on the screen to say the lord's prayer in the original aramaic as yeshua ben joseph spoke it and you will receive the maximum benefit because what we have in English is good, yet what we have in English is not the exact same octave and vibration of the original Aramaic, Hebrew Aramaic, yet what we have in English is very good because once again, it's been amped up by the attentions and prayers and, and dedication and devotion to so many people, right? Yes, so it still works, okay? The second thing, that banishes stuff like you would not believe. Salt. Now, a lot of my witchy friends say that they can do more magic with the free stuff you get out of 7-Eleven. Those little packets of free stuff in 7-Eleven, free condiments, they can wick up, wick up, <laughs> whip up magic like you wouldn't believe on free stuff you get out of 7-Eleven. One of them is salt. And a lot of witchy friends of mine, they just carry salt in their pocket. And I have this little container of salt, sea salt. I love sea salt. Love it, love it, love it. Love it. The sea salt and sea salt banishes. Make a circle of sea salt. Put it on your altar. This is how you could use the sea salt. Make a circle. A circle. Contain the spirit. You Remember, you command spirits. Contain whatever it is that you think is bothering you in the circle. So salt around it that thing can't move until you can get a higher entity like a demon a, 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 an angel to bank banish this demon or banish this demon back where it came from and lock the door this is really kind of woo, -woo sounding but oh and i'm gonna go for it anyway because i feel like you want this information and i'm gonna tell you what i know a lot of these entities are in places where they're locked up chained up by various means and also by various mages who have the power to banish demons, to chain them, to cast them into abyss and all of that. And mostly every mage that I know, especially the ceremonial magicians, they will tell you, including Aleister Crawley, that they don't care who they talk to, an angel or a demon, as long as they get the information that they're after. So they'll summon whatever they require. They don't have judgment on, oh, you can't talk to demons. Christ talked to demons all the time, boo. Hello, Christ talked to demons all the time. He had conversations with them. When they saw him coming, they knew who he was. Oh my God, you are the Christ the one. He would say, I command you not to speak. Or he would say, what's your name? <gasps> Legion. Once again, we have the O-N at the end. Legion, because there are many of us. And when they saw him coming, they said, oh, you are the Christ, you are the, God, the, the son of the living God. Have you come to bind us, persecute us, torment us before our time? They're asking him. And that's the same thing that needs to happen to you or with you in the spirit realms with regard to this. If you man up, boss up, remember you are a sovereign being. Remember your divinity. Remember you are source. You command the, this whole universe. You can't let a created thing 
command you when you're the creator. You better get it right. Better get it right. So, Lord's Prayer. Snuff that stuff out. Salt. Stuff that snuff out. So you can call in some reinforcements to put it back where it came from, away from you. And the last thing I'll say is Florida water is wonderful for that. And essential oils, just in general. Every day I'm slathering myself with essential oils. Why? Because once, once they smell, one, they smell lovely. The two, they're God's creation. You know, it came from Earth Mother. I ain't putting that stuff on my body from Bath and Body Works. No, no harm, Bath and Body Works. I ain't trying to put y'all out of business, but I'm, I'm just saying. I ain't putting it. That's poison. I ain't putting that stuff on my skin. I used to slather myself up with the poison, poison berry, juice berry. <laughs> they got all those names. The heavenly berry scent and all that. I ain't putting that stuff on me. Uh -uh. Read the ingredients. If the ingredients list is that long, I'm not putting it on my skin. Because your skin is your largest sponge. I digress. It's not health video. However, essential oils, shea butter, coconut butter, olive oil, castor oil. Put stuff like that on your body. That's all I put on my body. Shea butters, castor oils, oils, olive oil, you know, stuff like that. And then you, I slather myself with essential oils because one, yes, they're, they smell wonderful. And so that automatically puts you in a vibration, feeling good. Number two, they're from heaven. They're from earth mother. Very natural, pure. It's the essence of earth mother. Woo, put that on you. That's power. Number three, they are higher vibration, which matches you with higher vibration beings such as angels. Angels don't like stinky stuff. Heaven, my mother taught us the cleanliness is next to godliness. If something wasn't smelling right for my mother, she would be scrubbing it, cleaning it, getting out her ammonia and bleach. Yes, my mother used to mix ammonia and bleach. I'm surprised she didn't poison all of us. <laughs> but anyway, and her mother used to actually give her brothers baths with bleach poured in the water, would scrub them up. Oh, they were the clean freaks. You know, and there was something to that because cleanliness lifts you into a different vibration. So clean up your, your space. This is the last thing I'll end with is this, getting downloads about Florida water. Thank you. Florida water. Clean up your energy field with Florida water. See, clean, cleaning up the, the, the spiritual hygiene will keep a lot of just stray stuff away from you. When you go into a place where there could be the tendency for strangeness, <laughs> extra stuff that you just don't want to carry around you, wrap your crown. You see me with my crown wrapped a lot of times. You will not catch me in a hospital without my crown wrapped because there's too many ideas in there about sickness and all that kind of stuff. Too much energy going on in there to go in there without my crown wrapped because they try to attach to your crown. And when, you get, get, when they get around light workers, if they can find an entry point, they're going to try to take it. If they can't find an entry point to you because you sealed up, locked up with love and you got your posse around you, all your angels, spirit guides, ascended masters, it's like locked down. They can't get in. <laughs> They're trying to look for a way to get in. It's like, no, boo-boo. No. So that's how I deal with them. Demons, negative spirits, negative entities, evil spirits. This is the last thing I'm going to leave you with a story. Because you know how I love stories. <laughs> so I'm walking going to the graveyard. I don't know I'm going to the graveyard. But I tell you like this. Cemeteries, they call my name. I can be riding in my car, sitting there, and my head will turn. There's a cemetery. In a strange place that I've never been to before. My head will just turn. Cemetery. They call my name. I can't go past the cemetery. When we went to that cemetery for for mama, uh, for now for my my mama, my mama and my grandmama are already going on to glory. My my aunt Marvel, my grandmother's sister. Okay, aunt Marvel. We just had hers about two three weeks ago. Her home going, and we all went to the cemetery to you know lay her to rest and whatnot after the service at the church. 
Aunt Marvel was over 100 years old. And Aunt Marvel was so sick when she was a child, the doctor told her mother she'll never make it to 10. She'll never see her 10th birthday. God had a different plan because Aunt Marvel saw over 100. I said the doctor left off a zero. But anyway, I guess it ain't his job to do math. Anywho, before we go into the cemetery, I'm like, oh, I feel it. Get out my pennies. I tell my daughter, get out my pennies. We have this thing in the car that has all this change in it, right? Now you just throw change down there. Get out my nine pennies quick because it came up on the cemetery. I didn't know where the cemetery was because we were in this long procession following each other into the cemeteries. I didn't know how close we were to the cemetery. And then all of a sudden we're up on the cemetery. I feel it. I'm like, ooh, get out my pennies. Nine pennies at the gate of the cemetery. Get my pennies. Roll the window down. Hope oh, nobody in this procession don't see me doing all this witchy stuff going to the cemetery. Put them nine pennies at the gate because none of them Yoruba goddesses are going to come after me. Hello, <laughs> Oya. I honor you. Thank you for giving me safe entry in here. And thank you for giving me safe passage out of here with no unwanted visitors in this car. There were four of us that came in this car. Myself, my daughter, my other daughter, my grandbaby. There's going to be four of us leaving, not a whole caravan of <laughs> spirits. We call them translucents. <laughs> Dead people just coming with you, whatever. We're not having that. So threw my nine pennies in and we come in once again, Lord's Prayer, our Father. And we leave. No incident. Left everything right there in the cemetery. Don't need to bring that with me. Now, here's a cemetery I'm going to. So that, that gives you some background about me and cemeteries. I'm on a walk in this neighborhood that I was lived in probably for a few years. And every neighborhood I've ever lived in, the guides will show me the cemetery. I'll just be walking and they will take me straight to the cemetery. I'll just be on my walk and they'll say, go left. And I'm, I'm just walking, I'm just walking and ah, I'm feeling good and looking up at the sky and, and I feel the, the, the nudge this way and I go that way and then, and then I go, oh, this says make a left here and I just make a left there and boom, I'm at the cemetery. <laughs> okay, we did this again. So I get to this particular cemetery and when I get to the cemetery, I pause. And the reason I pause at this particular cemetery is because I see inside beings. <laughs> Let's call them beings, you know, entities. You know, I kind of pause for a minute because I was in a deep process of opening and healing in the ministerial preparation and training and consecration and ordination many years ago. And I knew that there was part of me that were open, susceptible, because it was healing and wounded, you know, uh, healing old wounds. A lot of energy was moving in my system. I could feel it. So when I saw them over there, I checked, I looked to the left, you know, to my angels, like all these big beings that are around me all the time. I looked at them like, you, you see them? And they looked at me like, what? They ought to be afraid of you, not you hesitating when you see them. That's how the angels looked at me like, you've got to be kidding me. I was like, right. I had a moment of temporary amnesia. I forgot who I am. And I walked up, ooh, somebody's calling me. And I walked right up into that cemetery. They said, put up your crystal grid. Before I walked in, put up the crystal grid, is simply clear quartz crystals in a grid formation in your consciousness that only lets in or out love. Only love can traverse through the crystal grid. Put up the crystal grid, went in and had profound experiences in the cemetery that day. I'll end with this. Nothing to fear. Have understanding of this whole universe. Seek wisdom and all ye get him. Get understanding. Lastly, I'll say this. My phone is ringing off the hook in this moment. Lastly, I'll say this. If you keep yourself in a high vibration, speeded up vibration of love, ascension, 
bliss and keep your spirit team around you, it will be very difficult for anything to attach to you. And if it does, you know exactly how to get rid of it. I love you. This is Reverend Valerie Love. I would love to meet you at one of our upcoming events or retreats. I so appreciate you in my life. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being an amazing subscriber. Thank you for just being with me on this journey that we call life. Mwah! Love you. Yay.